of success switch and i do have uh, around 10 plus of years uh, experience in semiconductor particularly what we generally say is we are in the industry okay, so our today session will be uh, on the latest trends in vlsi and let's go through the agenda so today we are going to discuss on introduction to chip design and the latest trends in semiconductors the challenges and geopolitical issues affecting semiconductor industry and career growth future scope of young aspirants coming into semiconductor and we'll have a q and a on the end of the session so this session particularly uh, intended for all the young aspirants who are currently pursuing their engineering and those who are done or finished their engineering and those who are interested and keen to uh, enter in this semiconductor or vlsi industry yes someone raised a hand please anyone has a question okay yeah let's move on so the biggest challenges that we have in the current um uh, generation or the current uh, uh experience is uh, the lack of guiding the lack of motivation so lack of guidance is something uh, which is either from the uh, environment the college environment or from the um, the senior or from uh, the respective uh, family members who are already into the industry so it is individual responsibility to find a guidance so no one has enough time or no one spares their uh, precious time in guiding someone even if it is a family member so everyone should have self awareness and have their own guidance and find the best and correct uh, right guidance similarly the lack of motivation is what we see in the many of many engaged parents so motivation has to be uh, from individual not from the uh, the uh, other environment or any other person so motivation has to be from individual yeah i i see a hand raised from kazawali yeah you can unmute want to ask something okay i see uh, maybe it's a error technical error many are raising hands okay so i think i'm going forward so i see these are the biggest challenges from many engineering colleges that we have uh, come across engineers so i have seen micromanaging and uh, lack of self awareness constantly in a defensive mode and uh, making excuses so these are the uh, situations we have come across while dealing with the engineering uh, graduates so i would uh, suggest or recommend to have uh, self awareness so lacking of awareness will result in 
uh, spoiling the relationships and becoming moody and obviously you will not find any success so have, have a self awareness so self awareness can build a good success career so i would recommend having a strong motivation plus clarity in life or you can call it as self awareness and find the right guidance which can give you or bring success to you moving forward i would like to uh, discuss on the introduction to chip designing so chip designing uh, as many of uh, are from engineering background i'm not sure we have come across uh, the introduction to chip so here we have robert norton he is one of the uh, one of the uh, co-founders of fairchild semiconductor and intel corporation he is a american physicist uh, sorry physicist and he is the first person to bring monolithic integrated circuit into the world and that's uh, monolithic is also called as microchip so the first microchip uh, came into existence and he is one of the uh, inventors of this microchip so we have many uh, technologies and any many integration technologies and fabrication technologies uh, existing in solar because of some engineers like you currently coming from uh, engineering graduation into electronics or electrical and communications electronics and communications so you people are so important to the world that brings technology to the world so i see that the robot are not on or uh, any uh, scientist or a physicist that you can name in the invention of all these transistors and ics so they all has contributed so much for our uh, innovation and the digital world that we are living in so all the modern ic chips that we use are mosfet mostly mostly are metal oxide semiconductor so we are currently using mosfets c mosfets uh, sorry uh, the advanced mosfet technologies uh, so all these are possible because um, there was some in invention ha happened long back in history and we have standards um, uh, in designing ics okay so first cmos integrated circuit as we see is a, it is developed in the fairchild semiconductor by federico so since then we have come across the 3d ics we are currently working on uh, 3d ic integration integrated circuits uh, it is in the it is an era of integration circuits and in fabrication uh, we have the advanced mosfet using silicon and gallium nitride so we'll come across it so study from the aerospace and the pocket calculators to the day the current day to day life of every uh, individual in the world is using uh, an ic in his hand in the form of mobile phone gadgets um, acs washing machines what not every uh electrical and electronic component that is being used in our, day, in our daily lives are because of uh these renowned scientists and we have to acknowledge them their contribution so moving forward let's uh, discuss a little bit on the comp comparison between the cpus gpus and fpgas and asics so majority of the people are aware of what is a cpu because everyone is using a smartphone nowadays so 
CPU is a central processing unit. It's an individual processor. It can be developed individually or part of any ASIC or, a, uh, or in the same of any SOC design. So CPUs will have high uh, processing capabilities with a high processing cores. And these are predefined, uh, having this predefined instruction set, data block, data part widths. So these are, uh, CPUs are developed to make sure that if you want a system uh, on a board, let's say that you have a PCB board, you want to have all components uh, and use it for an application specific integrated circuit, then you need to have a processor. So if you have, if you are saying a processor, that's that means you are you are having a CPU there. So CPU is the core which will perform all the uh, arithmetic logic, logical operations, the, all the ALU operations. So CPU is the heart of any chip, the current era that we are using. And uh, GPU coming to GPU, it's a pure uh, graphical processing unit. It is intended for uh, processing uh, graphical uh, image images and video uh, data. So it is the background would be the digital signal processor, the DSP uh, supporting the GPU in terms of uh, processing the data. So GPU is very much used, utilized and used uh, in all the uh, graphical uh, video output devices like cameras, um, our mobiles, laptops, computers, and uh, any uh, image and video processing uh, electronic device. So uh, the manufacturers of GPU would be the AMD and NVIDIA. Globally, uh, everyone is aware of these two companies, uh, AMD and NVIDIA. So the, uh, along with them, we have Intel. Intel is a very good manufacturer of CPU and uh, GPU as well. Uh, so moving on to FPGA. So FPGAs are built differently and the architecture is uh, simple, but the cost of uh, an FPGA unit is very high. Uh, so FPGAs are built in, uh, in a very uh, neat architecture and easy to design actually. So we have PLDs, millions of program build logic cells. So FEJ has a different usage in the market. And uh, uh, Intel and Xilinx, Aldra, or other, and many other uh, FEJ companies are there. Very much uh, uh, dedicated, they, they are dedicated in designing FPGAs and they're specialized in that. And moving going to ASICs. So ASICs is something is a, you take a neat uh, PCB or a um, uh, empty blueprint and just start making all the components similar to a collection of all embedded ICs. So uh, it's an application specific integrated circuit that if you want to design uh, a home automation uh, uh, project or uh, any uh, any uh, any embedded circuitry, uh, which will in the end of that you want a system inside or no system. So depending on that, ASIC will become an SOC or a non-SOC. So if you are having a system, let's say CPU uh, part of your uh, motherboard or a PCB board that becomes an SOC design. And if you do not have a system, then it's a non-SOC, it's a uh, plain ASIC circuit. So it is a, ASIC is a customized design. So in the comparison that we see here, each individual component uh, plays a major role uh, in the uh, semiconductor and or a VLSA industry. So if you see, if you come across 
the performance in terms of processing, peak power, power consumption, flexibility, and the training and inference. Uh, inference. Uh, I would say uh, ASICS has the highest peak power and the lowest power consumption. And uh, ASICS are a little less flexible because of the reason you have to handle multiple ICs or multiple components on a board. Uh, that's a little flex, uh, less flexible. And the training wise, uh, ASICs are the potentially the best for training. Uh, but uh, as you can see, um, only few uh, designs are available. Let's say um, Raspberry Pi, Arduino boards, Kitmega, Netmill uh, training kits are available for the engineering graduates who can start their uh, learning um, embedded uh, circuits. So inference, I think uh, ASICs are not focused on inference. Um, I think FPGAs are very good with inference. So moving on, uh, as you can see, the life cycle of IC packaging, starting from 1980s to the current era, we have uh, from MC, MCM multi-chip modules to uh, system in packaging, SAP 1998s till 2005. And we have RF module introduced in 2005. And uh, we have 2.5 IDs, uh, 2.5D uh, ICs developed starting from 2008, the background of uh, designing 2.5D uh, ICs started from 2008 and by 2018 in within 10 years of gap we have come up with uh, 3d ic technology so 3d ICs uh, are currently uh, biggest trend that we see and uh, after 3d ICs, currently we are working on heterogeneous integration uh, this is still not in it not in the market yet currently uh, uh, the designing is still uh, happening in foundries. Okay. We'll discuss a little bit uh, going forward. So a basic example of connectivity of uh, a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor uh, uh, into uh, a Raspberry Pi. So a Snapdragon combination with Raspberry Pi uh, is Thunderberry 5. I think this is one, one of the uh, nice uh, SOC design that we have for uh, any application specific, uh, you can say. So, so as you can see, we have multiple components connected to Snapdragon processor. So CPU and uh, the basic all module interference and uh, the logic is written in this Qualcomm Snapdragon SOC and you can connect uh, all these uh, peripherals, sensors, uh, as you can see from uh, LAN port uh, to the 3.5 mm jack, mic, speaker and USB uh, chargeable cable and uh, you can have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, HDMI, and USB. So all these are possible because you have written uh, the very low code uh, for each and every module that you are going to connect to this SOC uh, to this processor. So processor is a part uh, of a chip or a board which will process all the operations and control manage each individual component on the board. So another example that we see, this is the right side, what you see is a, a Samsung mobile. And in the Samsung mobile, if you see the size of mobile phone, majority uh, occupancy of the board 
is uh, the battery. So the battery occupies majority of the space in any mobile phone because we cannot risk um, producing heat uh, and we cannot create as many as heat sinks we require in a uh, surrounding the um, battery to avoid any heat uh, affecting this uh, circuitry. We cannot do that. So we have to uh, isolate battery separately with the uh, chipset where you have all the components. So as you can see, uh, Snapdragon can, uh, that is pointed out here is something you can see it here. This is this is the internal design of a Snapdragon processor. And you have a flash storage. Flash storage is uh, where you can um, provide uh, external and internal memory storage units here. And you have a uh, magazine, current and voltage sensor, thermistor terminal, uh, and with the battery temperature sensor and an audio codec, which will connect to the GPU and RF fusion and the Skyworks. So you have all these components placed in the circuitry and Snapdragon that you can see the, the combination of CPU and GPU. So this particular design that you see here, this is a 3D IC package. It's a collection of all the uh, individual um, components, like a CPU sensor uh, control unit, 5G modem Wi-Fi, uh, and GPU, ISP, memory, all in one place. It's a collective chipset. It's an SOC, Snapdragon SOC. So this is the reality of the electronic uh, mobile phone that we use. Similarly, this is an Apple chipset. You can see the mobile phone structure would be a perfect rectangle uh, with a rounded uh, borders, but the if you remove the battery portion, the rest will be the circuitry, as you can see. So the circuit size is very small. So we have that level of uh, uh, technology node uh, shrinkage to two nanometer and 1.8 nanometer. Currently, that is uh, the trend that we are going. Uh, Intel, TSMC, Samsung, these manufacturing semiconductor manufacturers are ready with 1.8 nanometer technology. So the transistor size is so small that uh, you cannot even uh, see with your naked eye. It's the size of a, your hair. Uh, so we are trying to shrink the, uh, um, the gap of technology between transistors. So as you can see, uh, multiple vendors are contributed in designing a single mobile phone, even though it is, we are just talking about uh, uh, Apple. Apple generally, um, till last uh, four years, it depended on the, uh, it depends on every uh, third party vendor. It, it doesn't have its, its own uh, manufacturing, uh, its own in-house manufacturing analysis. Um, later in 2020, I think uh, Apple has started uh, with the combination of Foxconn. I think Foxconn is one of the uh, uh, manufacturer for Apple. And luckily we have a Apple Foxconn manufacturing plant in, I think Tamil Nadu. Okay, so India is slowly moving on to uh, semiconductor manufacturing hub. So as you can see multiple components that you have here, like 26 components, each component is from a different manufacturing vendor. Well, those are expertise in designing that. So LPDD here, SDRAM, uh, 
four day package uh, multi chip memory is provided by micron micron is a company that you can see in situated in hyderabad um, but it doesn't manufacture it designing happens in india majority manufacturing happens uh, outside india so see on semiconductor analog devices nxp semiconductors texas instruments these are all manufacturing companies contribute in designing the uh, one uh, mobile phone okay so we have more opportunities when we have more uh, vendors contributing to design a single electronic device so we we need to uh, utilize that so a small uh, introduction to the flow of uh, ic design starting from system specification till packaging and testing we have uh, close to 11 uh, sometimes depending on the complexity of the design we might move to 12 to 15 flows uh, internally but the basic flow structure will be same so each flow uh, each point here you see out of 11 points uh, chip specification is done by one engineer so a group of uh, real time engineering designation people will work on chip specification uh, and chip specification will include design architects and rtl design engineers design entry come functional verification include the verification design verification engineers so each one is a designation rtl synthesis whatever the rtl design engineer has written the code in verilog is verified by verification engineers and once verified it will be synthesized into a uh, gate level once you do RT, rtl is given as input and you synthesize it you convert into gate level uh, netlist then you divide the uh, individual modules into partitions based on the size and the location of the uh modules then you test it there is a dft design for test mechanism and these are separate designation a group of engineers who are designated as dft engineers will work on design for test who introduce additional test mechanism uh, into the existing design whatever rtl design in there has inserted uh, written the code on top of that you add test mechanism that will help in post manufacturing and uh, during the manufacturing also in manf during manufacturing testing and post manufacturing testing this mechanism the logic that we insert during this stage is very helpful uh, in troubleshooting diagnosing refurbishing so when you have a mobile phone that is is heated up or uh, your chipset is uh, uh, heating up too much or uh, your phone got hanged up you, you go to technical uh, the technician and the technician sends your mobile to the manufacturer the manufacturer has to diagnose it so if he has to diagnose it you have to have a diagnosis logic inside existing during design itself if you do not have the diagnosis or a troubleshooting mechanism the test mechanism existing in the design you cannot test the as a post manufacturing post that we have floor planning these all come into physical design parameters so physical design engineers those are working in this uh category some from 6 to 11 are called physical design engineers so few physical design engineers will work on floor planning few will work on placement clock to synthesis routing final verification and gds2 so these stages are where you convert your gate level at least uh, into physical uh, cmos design so your actual cmos design will come and implement here so this is the flow so once you are done with all of this you will give it to the fabrication for packaging and testing that comes into market 
so this is uh, a mechanism where you design and you bring the, you take the silicon ingots silicon ingots is uh, is a important subject and everybody should know being an electronics uh, student okay electrical electronics student everybody should know this because on what basis are you designing chip if you do not have a silicon wafer you cannot design any chip any chip in this world is it currently exist this world because of you have silicon wafer on wafer as a substrate you start building up your design so wafer fabrication is very important and we have wafer fabrication engineers also so those who are working on foundries they are specialized in wafer fabrication process they dress like this in the labs and work on uh, this process so i'm not going in depth into the stages of wafer, fab wafer fabrication process but uh, it's pure silicon coming from the sand make uh, heat, heat heat the silicon and purify the silicon required for our uh, ic design and we slice i mean we make a size of wafer of our required sizes and we slice it and this is a process starting from that so as you can see once you have wave uh, ingot is something like uh, a mold once your silicon is heated up to certain temperature and you get a purified pure uh, what you call the silicon then you uh, place it in the molds and that becomes a ingot once the ingot is there in the pure crystalline silicon form then you slice it polish it and material deposition happens and multiple spinning of wafer happens all this euv lithography so each stage will have a separate designation of engineers who works in the lab on the fabrication unit so there are multiple opportunities in chip designing as you see okay so uh, coming to testing so every chip has to be tested uh, in the sense you have designed a an ic in your laptop but it has to be tested right before uh, manufacturing in one la lakhs of millions of ics you need to test it whether your design whatever you design uh, your design engineer has done or your entire asset flow engineers have been doing so far i have done in their laptop it has been uh, practically proven so this test mechanism uh, is very important this is called automatic test equipment so you set this machine configuring to this your particular project and you load soc design your soc design whatever you have designed in your laptop and then you take wafer suitable uh, for your size of the soc and all and you test your design on a silicon wafer lively using this machine and up to around i think you will be using if it is a large production soc design uh, you will waste around 1000 to 3000 uh, wafers until 1000 to 3000 wafers you test uh, and prove that your ic is stable and working as required then you go with mass production so these testing equipments are this is very costly high costly close to one tester cloth costs you around uh, 40 crores to um, maximum 250 crores that i have seen 
uh, in the Indian currency that I'm talking. So testers are too costly. Not any everybody everybody can afford it. Okay, so the manufacturing plant of uh, this tester, this particular tester is called Adventist. This uh, Adventist manufacturer of this IC testing equipment uh, is situated in Malaysia. Uh, I have worked very close in my experience and I have tested many of the ICs that I worked on these testers. That's a good experience. So each tester has its own different requirement. So you can test uh, different kinds of SOCs, ASICs, NOCs, FPGAs. So whatever the uh, criteria we have in designing ICs. So you have classic uh, uh, types of testers as well. So coming to this uh, semiconductor trends that we have uh, in our current uh, 2023 that we are talking, uh, we have brought up IOTs, artificial intelligence, advanced materials, novel architectures, advanced packaging, 5G, in-house chip designing, fabrication technologies, automotive chips, and sustainable manufacturing. So the, the left side and right side, whatever the companies that we have highlighted, so they are specialized in designing or bringing innovation into this uh, IOTs or artificial intelligence or 5G or fabrication technologies. So we have around 1,336 1, startups and emerging companies that are uh, uh, working consistently only on the these latest trends that you see. So 1.3K of companies are working and only these highlighted ones are the top, top, uh, top ones in bringing the innovation. And once innovation is successfully proved, the patent is proved, we, we make it as a standard and that comes into market uh, very soon. So when we have these many companies, uh, um, we have that many opportunities as well. And the biggest reason for uh, innovation is first you innovate the basic structure, basic, uh, the base. I, as I said before, if you do not have the silicon wafer, you cannot proceed forward in designing any IC. So we have brought innovation in silicon by silicon carbide, gallium nitride. So silicon carbide is used for high power, gallium nitride is used for high speed. So we are not uh, saturated at silicon, we moved and we brought innovation, worked, uh, we did a lot of R&D research and development on silicon with other uh, elements and we brought silicon carbide and, uh, and then gallium nitride. So as you can see, silicon carbide is currently being used in wind turbines, railways, solar panels, inverters, and uh, we have both uh, uh, EV and HEV in both silicon carbide and high speed as well. So in gallium nitride, we have both, again, so solar panels, the data centers, the PCs, CDC converters, and mobiles also. Even the latest advanced mobiles are going to get designed by this technology, gallium nitride, which is because your mobile phone needs high speed with less power. So gallium nitride is a one that gives you that uh, benefit. So gallium nitride is uh, more faster, like 20x faster in switching and very lighter and smaller, three times smaller than silicon. And energy conserving is very high in gallium nitride up to 40%. And higher power density, three times than silicon. 
and three times faster in charging the latest uh, fast charging that you take up is because of galvanonitride the charges that you use in quick charging fast charging within 15 minutes or 30 minutes is because of this galvanonitride and it's 20% lower uh, in system cost So, sorry for the intervention. We have this uh, big uh, market opportunity currently happening in semiconductors because of the gallium nitride. The advanced podcast that we see, the solar panels, wind turbines, the 5G base stations, and all the TV gaming consoles, the latest uh, LED televisions with the high definitions are because of uh, the gallium nitride. So the market opportunity is around 13.1 billion uh, for gallium nitride. And whatever the market opportunity we see uh, is across uh, the world. So the leading customers that we see for gallium nitride as you, uh, everybody know, the Dell portable chargers, LG Electronics, NVIDIA laptops, Oppo chargers, and MI charger phones, Lenovo chargers, Xiaomi chargers. So all these chargers currently are being using the gallium nitride technology. So the advanced technology that we see in semiconductors. So moving on to... Uh, the introduction to the, all the semiconductor companies. So whatever you see here are the very basic uh, for your understanding. I just want to introduce here the different types of semiconductor companies in the industry. Uh, foundries, which are fab, which, which are have foundries means it has a fabrication unit. And we have fabless companies that those are in the red column here. All these are fab-based companies. These are with fab. And these are tire one uh, third-party vendors. And these are vehicle OEMs who are the customers who use, uh, who utilize this uh, fabless and fab companies to design their uh, electronic uh, components or design devices. So moving on. Uh, the current challenges that we have uh, in the industry are supply chain disruptions because of the COVID pandemic that we have seen in uh, the last two years or three years that we have come across. And uh, the ongoing geopolitical issues, and the tensions, which is uh, causing disruptions to the um, chip shortage because you cannot uh trade in and trade out your uh, electronic components that were being manufactured because of uh, any pandemic issue or uh, uh, geopolitical issues in between countries and countries so the second challenge is that we have is uh, technical com technology complexity and miniaturization so technological complexity is where uh, you want more features to be part of your IC or a device. So you come up with one version this uh, this year, uh, even any mobile phone that you see or a laptop, he want to uh, upgrade it with uh, more features in the next release. That means in next year, he has to come up with uh, more advanced features. So the hardly if you have one year of uh, upgrading your IC, in one year, when this IC gets uh, designed, tested, packaged, and uh, released to the market. So in one year, this much is happening. Okay, that's a small time that we have. Uh, that means time to market is rushing uh, the companies to hire more engineers so that you can uh, work on 
you can reduce the overall uh, design time to lesser time period, near lesser time period, and uh, higher the most efficient uh, engineers uh, uh, to bring quality uh, into designing. And so all these are uh, current challenges that we are facing. Okay, so again, uh, we have latest fabrication technologies again and uh, integration technologies coming into market because of this technological complexity and uh, smaller technology nodes. So all these challenges with time to market uh, is the biggest uh, positive for one way and the negative for one way positive is that uh, you will need more resources to bring time to market with a shorter duration in a shorter duration so you need more resources we need we lack resources here in semiconductor resources are very uh, very lacking and we need resources in semiconductor because of uh, time to market and uh, the latest technologies that are getting developed. So the next is the same, uh, the talent shortage and uh, skills gap. <coughs> so talent shortage and skills gap is the biggest challenge that we are coming across because even the EC or electronics, uh, electronics and electronic, electrical engineers also showing trends in moving into software or uh, other domains uh, those, even though they are graduated in uh, the core electronics and electrical domains, uh, so that is one biggest challenge here. Yeah. So talent shortage is very much uh, a problem in our semiconductor currently, and we have a very big skill gap coming out of uh, the colleges. The students are not uh, filled with the right gap. So as you see. If you have one year of time, let's say any one mobile phone, let's say Samsung phone. Samsung has brought uh, uh, S22 Ultra last year, and this year it has come up with the S23 Ultra. So in one year, it has made some changes to the design, and even a slightest change, even a single flip-flop is being added into design. He has to completely, uh, I mean, that it has, all the engineers has to rework in designing the S23 Ultra again. So all the resources are very much needed. And in six months, if you design, in next six months, you can concentrate on testing and packaging and manufacturing, bulk manufacturing and marketing. So in six months, what do you expect in designing if you have less resources? And you are taken into the company, you are hired by the any significant company, and if you do not have the real-time skills, like, for example, material science, device physics. Process engineering, RTL designing, DFT, physical design. So in the ASIC flow, whatever the designation we have, the flow we have, this is not thought part of your academics and companies expect the with, uh, engineers to be hired with this knowledge because there will not be any post hiring training happening in the semiconductor because everybody is so uh, important in semiconductor and so precious that um, managers really uh, uh, Catch, catch engineers' uh, hands and legs to uh, work more or uh, spend some time or uh, uh, what we call, uh, we give more benefits to you, okay? So this kind of all benefits that come into semiconductor not present in the uh, software because this particular digital era is possible because semiconductor and you are much valued here and valued so to uh, fill this gap there are many training institutes and colleges are getting uh, prepped up in training their students in filling these gaps so 
this is one of the starting point where I introduced myself as a uh, training institute, right? So I come up here, give you the VLS awareness or uh, explain you the latest trends. So colleges, I really appreciate the colleges bringing up this uh, 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 expertise to the students and help them uh, fill up their skills and uh, uh, become, I mean, make the student, make your students a uh, job ready after their graduation. So, so skill gap is very much uh, present in the current era of students uh, coming from the engineering background. So please uh, utilize this opportunity that we have and more and more engineers are required because you cannot force one engineer to work for more time. You need uh, three engineers, then you have to need three engineers. So this is not software that you ask uh, an engineer to sit and work uh, entire day. In semiconductor, it doesn't work that way. So semiconductor is so valued that every engineer is almost like a scientist. So you are so much valued here. And uh, whatever the role that you play in semiconductor, you are uh, respected and valued as long as you do your work so efficiently. Okay. So we are trying to bring lack of uh, awareness that we have in the industry. We are trying to fill in this uh, gap by bringing awareness. So. Uh, we are trying to introduce the technology and the semiconductor importance uh, in the market uh, to all the engineer aspirants. So, semiconductor research, design, and development uh, is currently the biggest um, turnkey to all the uh, engineer aspirants. So, we welcome all the electronics, electrical, uh, and communication engineers to be part of semiconductors and we are there to help. So I uh, I already see many of the companies like Cadence, Intel Broadcom, Micron, Vipro, HCL, Scient, Mosfield are providing the training and they are tying up with the uh, uh, training institutes like us uh, in uh, teaching all these real-time industry tools, and uh, the training programs in related to RTL designing or a DFT engineering or a physical design, and then make them reach the companies for a placement. So they need a trained fresher rather than a fresher. So as I said earlier, no semiconductor company trains you post hiring. Even in, in Intel or these all product-based companies, hire students from IIT, IIIT's and IITs directly for an internship, not for permanent position. They are hired as interns. They have to work for one year. They have to learn. And even in one year, no, there is no training concept. There are, there are no um, professional trainers, dedicated trainers for training interns. They, the trainee, uh, those who got uh, uh, accepted as an intern, in the company, he or she has to uh, learn uh, budding up with the existing senior engineers and they have to learn in one year and they have to clear the interview process or the um, criteria to become permanent. So even for that uh, top institutions coming from top institutions, they have to have, they have to go through all of this. So uh, please think or if you have a uh, skill that is filled by our, uh, this training institutes. If you're getting trained up in all these domains, you become a trained fresher. So you are easily taken in to a permanent position in any of the company uh, rather than an internship. So, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to wrap up the session with a little bit of um, real time. Uh, salaries that we uh, expect from semiconductor. So RTL design, physical design, DFT, design verification. These are the four uh, basic 
and the topmost uh, designations that we have the semiconductor. So as a fresher, the salaries that can be expected is six lakhs to twelve lakhs per annum. And moving forward with the five plus years of experience, you are a senior engineer with uh, twenty four lakhs to thirty lakhs, thirty two lakhs expected. So this is across all the domains, and you have a perfect work life balance in any of these domains that you see. So we are looking for skilled engineers. So get the skill filled up, get guided by the institutions. So plan your career in third year or a final year of your academics itself. Any queries? I'm open for questions. If you want to, uh, if you have a query, you can ask in the chat. Okay, then thank you. Thank you so much for the management for providing this opportunity. Bye, students. Bye, one.